Richard Just Humphrey is my name. I'm an artist and a scholar. We're in my studio in uh, Mid Wales, where I've painted for 50 years. How did you first meet my granddad, Roland Penrose? I'd like to tell you that I met him in the, in, in the gallery that I was showing at at the time. Um, and he came to pick up his the painting he bought. And the painting was, what was it called? It's called This Is What It Looks Like In The Day. Yeah. And, it, I mean, I'm a bit notorious for my titles because they are... They're you know, really I always, good. I, I like always it. try to make them <laughs> interesting. He came to pick up the painting. Yeah. And we didn't, we didn't speak much. And I, I have to confess... I had never been to the ICA, even though it was only six doors away from the gallery. So what, what year was this? Was this early 60s? 1963. 63. I, I, I do remember him telling me later that he was very surprised because he thought I was about 16. Because I looked very young for my age. It was, it's a family trait. Your grandfather didn't stay long. He, we exchanged. I said, look, I know about the elephant of Salibs. I know you own that picture because I've seen it in a book. Mm. And I, 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 if I'd had a bit more uh, courage, I might have written to you and asked if I could come and see it. And he said, well, my boy, you should have written to me. You should, because you could, you'd be more than welcome to come and have a look at it, you see. And, and, and I, I said, well, that's, that's really nice. And he said, look, uh, um, I'll, I'll, I'll make some sort of arrangement. I'll be in touch with you. So that was, that was the end of that. And he left. And Eric said... Bond so he Street. was one of the guys that ran the portal. Portal gallery, gallery yeah. yeah. He, really, he was, Eric, was, Eric was the cutting edge. And Eric said... I like him, and it was extraordinary. I, I never heard him talk like that. He wasn't a sort of person who would make a compliment of that, banal compliment like yeah. that. And I said, what? what? Why are you saying that? And he said, he likes women. <laughs> right. What do you think he meant by saying he, he likes was women? Pay for Eric... He was paying a big compliment. And but you I, don't think it was, and it meant he meant sexually? No way! That little exchange just stayed with me. That, that happened 60 years ago. Yeah. And it was like, today, in our society, guys are leaning over the backwards to, you know, lying through their teeth about equal rights for women and all that. You know, it's like the world's changed so much. When I used to see him and I was with Salima, mm -hmm. he called her Selima, Selima. And he always included her in everything. And she'd just been diagnosed with a serious mental problem. Mm -hmm. and, and she w was not a happy person. Yeah. And he made her feel okay. That's absolutely for sure. So he was, would you say he was... Inclusive. Inclusive, respectful? Absolutely, absolutely. Me and Salima met um, your grandfather, Victoria, was it? And, and he read a book all the way <laughs> on the train. That's very yeah. unsociable of him. Well, it was kind of cool, you know. We were very like that, you know, we were hmm. touching each other all the time. When you got to Farley's, was it just you there? Were there other people there? Just Only you... Lee. Yeah, OK. Uh, and then d did you have a cook or something like that? Paula or Patsy. Yeah, there was somebody else. So when you got to Farley's, how did Roland, he invited you to go for a walk? Yeah. F the first thing was, it was getting dark. Mm-hmm. And he said he was talking about night vision. Right. And he knew, seemed to know a lot about it. And he said that y you, you really had to be out in the dark before you clicked into this night vision. I mean, I think it was because he wanted us to go for quite a long walk. Yeah. 
He seems he to... was he's legendary for his long walks. He, oh, okay. Yeah. So so in order to attenuate the walk, yeah. he was telling me that I would sooner or later I'd start to see things, <laughs> and um, <laughs> you know that appealed to me. I mean, it was it was certainly interesting mm -hmm. because he was involved in camouflage theory. Yeah. And he talked all about that. I took that from a photograph in the Geographic magazine. Right. And I just stared at the photograph and I thought, this says everything that you ever need to know about life. Yeah. It has it all. But you're, Ch but children, you're... a scientist, wise man, a sense of mystery, but your, your earliest works, like the ones in Ronan's collection, yeah. ones that are considered yeah. surrealist, yeah. They're, they're not from photographs. Where Do they come from just a mixture of things? Oh, ev of... almost every part of them did. Yeah. Yeah. That's brilliant. I, wasn't, I, was, I was still using photos. There's a little sort of like semi-medieval figure at the bottom of that painting, the first painting that Roland bought. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that came from a, a book of ours. How did the show happen? The I think probably, I think happened. probably I didn't see him much until the first show at the ICA. Your first show? My first show. So how did that come about? It was a group show. Oh, it was a group show. And the, the first show I had there had Paul Orego in it. Mm -hmm. So who, who curated the mix? Always with the ICA, mm -hmm. there was conflict in the air. Yeah. <laughs> you know that. Yeah. You see, I, I always stayed clear of it. Wise move. <laughs> yeah. And also, I never used to go there because no. it was a drinking club. Yeah. And I wasn't a drinker. I was invited by letter to come and meet Peggy Guggenheim. Mm -hmm. That's where I first got my impression about Lee, because Lee and Peggy mm -hmm. were both tipsy at that party. Yeah. And they were both a bit outrageous. Bert Kitchen was my mate, mm -hmm. and Roland showed him with me mm -hmm. in, the, in the ICA, that was a result of my friendship with him. And Muriel was a peach. So this is Bert's partner? Bert's wife. Yeah. And I took them both to dinner at, at Lee's, Lee and Roland's house. And Lee said, I've been out buying underwear, honey. Right. <laughs> she said, come on, I'll show you. And she took her out. Yeah. About an hour passed and they came back and Muriel was bright red. <laughs> Her face was bright red. So we left. Mm. So as you Bert and me both turned on Muriel and said, <laughs> What went on? Yeah. You see? And Muriel said she got me to try on her underwear. <laughs> that sounds just like her. <laughs> and she said she just wanted to see it on some an, another person. And 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 uh, <laughs> I, I, I had to undress, which made me feel embarrassed. Oh, but, this is sad. Um, she was. She she just said I was lovely. That's all. Because Lee was formidable. And I was a young man mm -hmm. without a lot of confidence, let's say, you know. Mm -hmm. And I can remember say, I said something about the war, you know, some, oh, I'm, I'm so bored with the war, or something like that. Mm. But she exploded. Right. And she said, you don't know what you're saying, Sonny, you know, that mm. sort of thing, yeah. in that sort of way. And she said, you know who you were sitting in this room with last 
last time you came here. Right. I said, well, there was a, your friend, she, she said, that was Odette. She's, I said, you don't have to tell me what she is. I know what she is. She says, she's a war hero. Mm -hmm. And so I'd met Odette in their house. Yeah. What, what was his personality like? Well, I mean, my sense in the ICA was that this guy was in charge, but everybody was kind of pretending he wasn't or something. You know, it's like, I mean, he was obviously directing things, but it didn't look like he was. Right. I mean, I, I'll tell you a funny thing about R Roland. It, it, it wasn't Roberto, it was Meta. Yes. And I wasn't Richard, I was Humphrey. Yeah. You know, he'd say, oh, is that Humphrey? Is yeah. Humphrey there? You know, it was like, it was all, that was the convention. Yeah. It wasn't Pablo, it was Picasso. Mm. He had that ability to open doors. I met Henry Moore. Mm -hmm. Now, so Is that through, through Roland? Yeah, yeah. It, I met him in his house. I don't know if we were at dinner or a party, but he came over to me and he said, I love your painting. And I thought, are you taking the piss? You're Henry Moore. You're the most famous artist in my world. Because mm. I grew up in the Anglophone world mm. and all the jokes in Punch were about Henry Moore. More Henry, you know. Yeah. And so to be talking to the most famous artist in the world mm. and then to have him make a compliment to me, I was completely, you know, tongue-tied isn't the word. I couldn't think of anything to say to him. But I mean, as far as I was concerned, the, it was so novel to be somewhere that was, you know, his, he'd bought a picture of mine. Mm -hmm. He was in he was in the world that I aspired towards and, and also had a foot in. Mm. So it, everything about that was was good fun. I went to dinner in their house. Is this their London Their house? London house. Yeah. That wiped me out in a way because I <coughs> I saw that I saw one of the late Dorothea Tannings on that visit. And I can tell you exactly where it was hanging which, in which, relation which to the door. Which picture was it? It was like a sort of table napkin, mm -hmm. variation on a table napkin, cloth, yeah. drapery, yeah. Uh, freely painted, Jesus Christ. And there was the Dorothea Tanning, yeah. and in front of it on the table mm -hmm. was this fireworks, tin fireworks box, yeah. with the indentations where the fireworks had been. Mm -hmm. And it was all over painted by Dali, touched, touched up in Dali's style. Yeah. And Roland showed it to me as I, as I kept, was taking my coat off. And, and um, <coughs> I, I was, I, you know, I was thrilled by it. Like, did you ever have <laughs> chats with Roland um, about your work or his work? Or? No. No? No. That was the, the weird thing. I tell you what, listen. I didn't know he was a painter. And yesterday, because you were coming here, I looked up Roland Penrose on the internet. Right. I, anyway, the first thing I saw was the painting, and I'd seen it before. But I've only, I'd only seen it in reproduction, and now I'm looking at it again in reproduction. And it was a painting of a woman's face with little birds oh. and butterflies over her eyes. Winged domino. Called. Anyway, I looked at the painting yesterday mm -hmm. and I thought, oh shit, this is, this is sublime. It's the colour of the skin. It's like a sort of, it's a grey mauve, yeah. which is like the inside of a shell. I, you see, I'd got the impression, because he did so many things, that he was a kind of a dilettante. Yeah. He Years kind ago. of stopped painting when he started the ICA, so most yeah. of his paintings are from, from before the 50s. Yeah. 
I would see him utterly differently today. I can only talk about him as someone who loved him, beyond being a father figure. I mean, yeah. he's so, always giving me advice about things. OK. Always. Just at the parties, or...? Yeah, he came up to me at the party where, where the, that Australian guy was, you know, the famous shock of the new guy, and he said, I, Rich, I, I don't think you should, should be here. I th he why, said that. Why, why do you think he said that? I was, yeah, I was cripplingly shy. Oh. Yeah, 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 I was. I was very shy. And then I would sort of burst out with something and, and sometimes it would be okay. I, I was given something called the Cassandra Award. Brilliant. Now Roland had put my name forward for that. Fantastic. That's absolutely for sure. Yeah. That is a fact. So it made quite a difference with your career? Nobody else in my whole life has stepped in and done things for me, except probably my mum or my dad, you know, mm. and, and he was doing that. Every artist, yeah. every artist dreams of having the, the perfect patron for their art, you know, yeah. and, and so Roland was that, mm -hmm. plus 